cares if I'm pretty if I fail my finals? Uncontrollable, sure about everything. Everything's falling apart. Failure. I'm not perfect anymore. You think you can hurt me? My college boyfriend proposed to me at my graduation from Yale and I said no, because I wanted to pursue my career. Now it's 10 years later, I didn't achieve anything, I don't have a job, I don't have a home, I don't even have underwear. He is engaged to a friend Harris and I'm his mistress. Only tap dancing makes me feel better and I might be carrying his child. Maybe you have been one of these responsible and rather shy bookworms and kind of nerdy girls in school, which is why you liked Gilmore Girls and followed Rory growing up. People always have these expectations that girls like Rory never make any wrong decision, they get a top degree, find a husband at Yale and might have some minor things that challenge their morals but they always get hold of themselves and they're so much smarter and more mature for their age and responsible. And Rory is kind of the good student, she's the smart one, the one with the good grades, uh, the one with the good relationship uh, with her mom and the Yale student, but she doesn't really live up to our expectations, the expectations everyone has of these people. She does seem like someone with a good character and she's so focused on school in the beginning and not superficial. We all remember this quote, who cares if I'm pretty if I fail my finals? I can't finish all this and sleep at the same time. You have to sleep, it's what keeps you pretty. Who cares if I'm pretty if I fail my finals? Oh, okay, you've got this so completely backwards. She's kind of the nerd and her mom is the one wanting her to be more relaxed and to party and enjoy her life which is kind of you know the opposite like rory was always more of a parent than lorelei was what is all this hmm? i found that if i focus too much on one subject i start to get a little punchy hmm. this way when i hit bolshevik revolution overload i just shift over here and oh hello Anne Boleyn is going down and then when that gets too depressing it's right over to calculus saving the party subject for last huh the shifting back and forth seems to produce better results i think you're pushing yourself too hard i made out a schedule in the dark eating junk food and not shaving my legs isn't gonna change that is it no okay so i don't even want to go there 13 million volumes i've read like what 300 books in my entire life and i'm already 16. do you know how long it would take me to read 13 million books in a way she also is some kind of pick me girl um like she's not like other girls that's what she wants us to think but in the end she is more like other girls than she wanted to be it's okay he's seen us as far as he knows we're just friends i'm broke busted beggared i have no apartment no car hell my license expired three months ago. Get out of here. Everything I own is in boxes scattered around three different states. I have no job. I have no credit. I have no underwear. What? I can't find that box. So just buy some new ones. Are you listening, man? I'm broke. I'll lend you the money. This isn't about you lending me money to buy underwear. This is about my life. People come up and smell me. And what are they smelling? Failure. There are many examples of this smart brunette who's smarter than her peers. She stands out from the others and is a role model in all areas. For example, Hermione in Harry Potter. I checked this out weeks ago, forbidden light reading. This is light. The mandrake's cry is fatal to anyone who hears it. Excellent. There are so many examples of this in the media and TV shows, books. They're not always brunette, of course, like Julie Meyer. They turn out to have flaws. They're not as perfect as you expect them to be sometimes. We also see how Rory is confronted with many challenges and might not be able to live up to the expectations everyone has. I think we expect her to have challenges more related to her being perfect rather than her being the flawed one, if you know what I mean. Like the audience wanted her to struggle with maybe fitting in or the dealing with the betrayal of others, while Rory is still the good person in the end, the intelligent one, and intelligent enough to make the right decisions, or at least not make totally dumb decisions. I don't know what to do, I don't. <laughs> Maybe we think in the end she's gonna get married and get a great job. Maybe she ends up in a metropolis despite growing up in this small town. And they also did that to Lorelai's character, this breaking of stereotypes. Um, she too should have gotten into an Ivy League uni and have a husband and then have a child. Instead, she got pregnant young, I think she was uh, 16, and without a husband or a degree or anything. So it's also this generational conflict or decline. And her grandparents maybe had hopes for Rory, trying to support her, while also having all these expectations, putting pressure on her, 
making her live up to the expectations they maybe had for Lorelai. We're also always confronted with these two realities. Rory's grandparents, rich and always there to support Rory on the one side, and Lorelai, the child that had a good upbringing and amazing conditions from the start for her to have an amazing and privileged life. I can have the maid make us some tea. And then she got pregnant, um, which reinforces the stereotypes of teen pregnancies, that they ruin uh, someone's life. It might be one indicator that there is a possibility that Rory can't live up to her grandparents' expectations either, that they just can't fix it. In terms of her job uh, as a journalist, we also see the reality of journalism. It's not that easy to have a career just because you attended an Ivy League uh, university. Plus her dropout uh, from Yale reflects the reality of how many people choose the wrong career and they had to choose early and now they feel lost and want to find something else. Even after her break from Yale and her graduation, she struggles to find a job, which is also something very common. And she must have realized this when she used her grandparents' connections earlier. There are so many factors why people get a job other than their degree and work ethic and talent. The series just addresses so many challenges that we are confronted with in real life, and none of them are easy, so they're also not easy for Rory. Also, when Rory wants to have a break from Yale, we can see how emotionally invested Lorelai is. Um, she really wants Rory to do what she couldn't because of her pregnancy. And now that we see so many examples on social media of women who manage to finish university and have a baby at the same time, this is actually a really good thing because this type of anger towards their kid is really not fair. And it wasn't fair that back in time women were dumped more than now by the education systems and employers when they got pregnant and had kids. And all the people being mad about women not having children, maybe those women who want to need, who want to, need to have more security and opportunities to have a career at the same time. Many also argue that Rory represents this millennial that struggles in the workplace and with relationships. She makes wrong decisions and is selfish and entitled. She doesn't get to meet a perfect Yale husband, for example. She doesn't get to build a career easily, despite being such a good student and such a mature girl in the beginning. But maybe that's also the contrast. She is mature so early, but then she struggles growing up to navigate her life. In season four, Rory also has sex for the first time, and it's not with her boyfriend or anything, but with a married man, Dean. Of course, Lorelai is still kind to her and doesn't really react like other moms would. She always is relaxed, maybe too relaxed, which leads to Rory being such an annoying and demanding character in the end. She never really faced any consequences and there were always lots of lies being told and everything. Lorelai also never really has any stable relationships, which kind of supports the idea that having the perfect daughter but being a horrible role model in many aspects doesn't work. Um, Taylor Ferber writes in an article on Bustle, I'm glad her ever after isn't as happy as I predicted. Rory's drive and hustle was always unmatched. With Gilmore Girls a year and a life, I expected her to be thriving at work and in her personal life too. Who knew she and Lorelai would be kicking back with booze, ordering Chinese, Greek, Italian food and hot dogs. Just another Saturday night, right? We see something similar in Desperate Housewives. Um, Julie is that nice girl, responsible, mature, a good student who's raised by her single mom. But we later see how Julie didn't really like her childhood, how she had to take care of her mother who was crushed by her ex cheating. Um, we get to see how difficult it really was for Julie. And then Julie also has an affair with a married man and Julie Meyer defends her affair saying she's just not the perfect daughter that her mom thought she is. No, this is not something you would do. Guess what? I'm not perfect anymore. And she gets pregnant early after sleeping with the neighbor's son, Lynette's son. We kind of had different expectations for her too, but it had to develop this way to kind of make a point. We also see how Julie wants to have sex for the first time with someone who is cheating on her, with her friend, and Julie doesn't get 
any special treatment in life just because she's kind, responsible and a good student. She's also almost killed by a serial killer despite being such a kind person. She gets to experience betrayal, tragedy, lots of challenges, all of that, just like Rory. Maybe Gilmore Girls and how Rory develops also shows the pressure we put on people that do well in school in Rory's case and that are just kind, mature girls and the pressure we put on people that have a privileged background and come from wealthy families, it shows that that doesn't guarantee anything and they kind of break with all these stereotypes and show us a Rory that we don't want or expect, but that's how it is. Um, we can't have expectations when most factors that determine anything are external and we have no control. It's only how we react to it that we can control and Rory has her own mind and her own way of approaching things. The way the series ended is kind of this typical, she should have had a husband and career, but look, she's pregnant instead, which is like a full loop back to her mother's life. Rory is a little older uh, when she's pregnant, but her life isn't stable either. So it makes total sense. This is where another Gilmore Girls could begin if she has a daughter. It's a full circle. Nicole Pomerico writes about this, um, these parallels in an article in 2016 as well. It's easy to see how Rory's life is starting to mirror Lorelai's. They both had unexpected pregnancies at inconvenient times in their lives. Lorelai was 16 years old when she found out that she was expecting Rory and Rory is unsettled and lost in her life, trying to figure out what she wants to do after her career plan A backfired. And now it looks like the man in Rory's life are following the path of the man in Lorelai's too. Lorelai was, well, much like yourself, she was a force of nature, just uncontrollable, sure about everything. Based on the parallels, many argue that the father of Rory's baby must be Logan because he is similar to Christopher. There's a serious parallel being drawn between Logan and Christopher and Luke and Jess. Many others discussed how Rory showed her real character, became more selfish and ungrateful, entitled, which might be the main character syndrome, uh, which can be related to her being the center of attention of both her mother and grandparents in a combination with Lorelai's very chill parenting style. So they are breaking stereotypes, showing generational conflict and decline, portray Rory as a selfish millennial and she is supposed to mirror Lorelai's life um, when she gets pregnant. In a way, they are really enforcing this idea that pregnancies are extremely inconvenient when the woman is not married uh, and her life is not stable in all areas. If you look at other pregnancies in TV shows, whenever they want to include lots of drama, they go for a pregnancy. One example is Adriana in 9210 when she's pregnant while in a relationship with someone who hasn't had sex with her. So this can't be the father. They always put the blame on the woman um, defining pregnancy as a character flaw and making her look like a total failure when this is just biology and it's the father's fault as well. In Desperate Housewives, we also have Danielle who gets pregnant and her mother then decides to send her to nuns and raise the child as her own, even pretending to be pregnant um, because it's such a shameful event that her daughter got pregnant at this age and her daughter was always portrayed as the one sleeping Tired. around. In contrast to Julie, who was supposed to be the model student and perfect, uh, the perfect nice girl. Me promise that no one would ever know what happened here tonight. There are lots of examples of teen pregnancies in the media. Then the other extreme is female characters who want to have a baby, but are single in their 30s and seem sad. Will you be my baby daddy? You know, I just always thought I'd be married with kids by now, but I still haven't found the one. Is it too early? Is it too late? It makes it seem like the only appropriate moment is when you're married to a perfect man within an age range of 24 to 31. Um, but there are so many articles, videos um, about how there is so much pressure on women to find a man, have a baby, because the window of fertility is so small compared to men's. For example, Sharon and Gianluca had a baby when she was 25 and he was 53. So they really did include so many topics, some kind of stereotypical. I messed everything up. I don't know what to do. What is all this? 
I found that if I focus too much on one subject, I start to get a little punchy. This way, when I hit Bolshevik Revolution Overload, I just shift over here and oh, hello, Anne Boleyn is going down and I'm broke. Busted. Are you listening, man? I'm broke. Failure. It's really been a while since I watched Gilmore Girls, but I hope you liked this kind of deep dive into Rory's development and looking into this topic of pregnancies and how other model students, these responsible mature girls are portrayed in different media. The story kind of crushes this dream for some to be this bookworm and model student in a small town that goes to Yale, finds the perfect husband and gets her dream job in New York City. But anyway, if you don't want to miss out on other episodes in the series on media and society, subscribe and I see you in the next video.